Do you feel? Do you feel nervous? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel sad? Do you feel anything at all? Because we have a pill for you. We have a pill for you. Well, in that world, what does medical marijuana mean? Where is the line between the person who they would never touch this stuff, but for the fact that they were sick, and as soon as they're better, not going to use it, right? The case of, say, Richard Brookheiser, National Review, testified, I basically almost never smoked pot. I only did it when I got cancer. I smoked to deal with nausea. Once that was done, I stopped, right? Yeah, but now, and then you have other people for whom this is pure joy. Pure joy, pure, pure bonus, pure extra, right? Yeah. Raise it up, don't raise it up, right? But in between, in between, everything in between. Well, it seems to me that we already have the model out there. And the question is to keep consolidating the model, making it solider, making it better, making it stronger, more reassuring. Because as public sentiment increasingly moves towards 50% plus in advocating for legal, but we know the stickiness is going to require a much higher number, and as we know that there's no way to go from here to here in our democracy and our federal system to jump from one place to another, it's going to be that system, I believe, that's going to emerge. And when people say those people aren't medical, the answer is going to be in part, well, what is medical? And what is your Viagra? And what is your mood enhancers? And what is this? And what is that? We are offering a control system that can work. Now, of course, the other side will come back and say, aha, I told you. For you guys, medical marijuana, as Mark Sattler will say, it was about nothing more than legalizing pot for everybody. So all you potheads could just go and get high. Hell yeah. so. And you want to know something? That's part of what it was about, and that's part of what it was not about. Because what we know is that half of the people who voted for Prop 215 did not support the broad legalization of marijuana. And I can even tell you that among the major funders of Prop 215, there was a healthy debate and disagreement about whether this was just about medical marijuana or about something more. Right? Medical marijuana is about medical marijuana. It is about preserving as, e as effectively as we can, as possibly as we can, the rights of patients there. But of course, it's also true that the thing that ultimately would, de would, would defend the patients the best would be to simply make it legal. Right? <laughs> and, uh, to say, you know, marijuana could well be the new aspirin. And I would say, Lester, you know, even if you're right, don't say it. <laughs> but then a couple of years ago, Britain's leading medical magazine, The Lancet, said it. <laughs> okay, Lester, you were right, you know. <laughs> Go ahead, say it. But you, know, you don't need a prescription for aspirin. You don't need a prescription for a lot of other things. And we know we should need a prescription for marijuana as well. But the fact that we don't need a prescription for marijuana doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to build up this marijuana prescription, marijuana recommendation, medical marijuana cannabis as, as thoroughly, as sturdily as possible. Right? What happened in San Francisco this past year with these hard-fought battles and Ross McCarini and the, and the mayor and everything and the act of different sides and, you know, some, and inevitably when you make a leap forward, some people are going to get hurt, some people are going to benefit. That's going to be the nature of it. And one of the things about building a movement is that the people who are going to get hurt by a change, are they ultimately stepping back and going, I don't want to get hurt, I'm invested, this is my self-interest here. Which, of course, anybody is going to do and has to do, because we all have livings and families and kids and all that sort of thing. But are you also going to step back and say, where is this movement going? What sacrifices need to be made in order to further legitimize this thing? Because that's what's going to do it. It's on the ground in California. And then it's in the courts with the case about the woman, I think. And it was a woman who was you know, fired because she was smoking marijuana for medicinal purposes in the privacy of her own home, and her employer fired her. And now that case is going to court. And then there's a the case, is the government going to have to reimburse people for their medical marijuana the same way they do other medication? Yes. Well, maybe we can go down that as well. And if you're a libertarian and don't believe that the government should reimburse anybody for any medications, I hear you, but keep in mind, so long as the government is reimbursing people with medication, let them reimburse for this one too. Yeah. Right? And maybe the cases, the WAM cases, the RAGE cases, the court will go on, but we've got to keep building legitimacy. And I've got to tell you, all around the country, we are counting on you guys in California. We really are. We are counting on you to keep it together, you know, you know, to keep it together and keep building this and institutionalizing this thing. Now, what I want to talk about for the rest of my time here is to say, you know, also, ultimately, the struggle, of course, is not just about marijuana. It's not just about marijuana. It's not just about hemp. It's not just about medical marijuana. It's not just about marijuana and our rights as adult, free human beings, right, to consume this wonderful substance. <laughs> Many of you have heard me say this before, and I apologize for those of you who have. But 
but let me say it again. Because we are building a political movement. And strategically speaking, there are moments when it is healthy for the marijuana law reform movement to move forward on its own, distancing itself from the rest of the drug policy reform movement. But ultimately, both marijuana reform and the broader cause of justice will be empowered by all of this coming together. Now, when you listen to our opponents, and they ask, or they say, those drug reformers, who are they? I'll tell you who they are. They're potheads. They're druggies. They're people who like to smoke pot, right? They're people who are, you know, are in the and all these other negative things. And of course, what's the answer when they make that charge? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, many of us, in fact, do like to smoke pot. It is true, we do like to smoke pot. We are among the tens of millions of Americans who do or have liked to smoke pot. Um, we do like it sometimes with our food. And we like it sometimes at the beach and for a walk in the park. We like it especially at the movies. Um, sometimes we like it when we're listening to music and we oftentimes like it when we're engaged in making love. Um, because we do find this thing a wonderful thing in our lives. We do find that marijuana adds joy, brings joy. That marijuana is something, you know, it's a good thing. <laughs> Thank you, God, for putting it on this planet. <laughs> and the reason we are involved in the marijuana law reform movement is not just because we like to smoke pot, because sad to say there are many, many millions of Americans who like to smoke pot and are not involved in the marijuana law reform movement. It is because we like and we benefit from smoking pot and we believe that its benefits vastly outweigh whatever harms may befall us. But, but, we are also politically conscious human beings. We are citizens with a capital C. Because we understand what the meaning of freedom is. We understand what it means to restrain the ability of the government to go into my backyard, into my home, into my car, and into my body. Because we believe that these laws are not right. Because we believe that nobody should be punished simply for what they are putting into their own bodies. And that that is true not just of those who smoke a joint, but those of those who take any other psychoactive substance that is out there. That's who we are. But is that all who we are? No. 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 That's not all who we are. Because who else are we? Who else is part of this growing movement to end the war on drugs in America and around the world? We are also the people who hate drugs. We are the people who have seen the worst that drugs can do. We are the people who grew up cleaning up our parents' puke because they were alcoholics. We are the people who lost our brothers and sisters to heroin overdoses. We are the people who have lost people we love to HIV AIDS. We are the people who have seen the worst of drug addiction. We have seen people come and steal into our homes. We are the people who don't like marijuana. We are the people for whom we saw our kid get out of marijuana and marijuana was the stepping stone to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. We are the people who wish marijuana never existed. We're the people, we understand, you may like it, you can use it responsibly, but we cannot. Whether it's genes, or whether it's nature, or nurture, whatever it may be, we can't use these drugs, and these drugs are bad, and if the world were drug free, it would be a better world, it would be a better world. But you know something? Just because we hate drugs does not, believe, does not mean that we believe the war on drugs is the way to deal with drugs in our society. Yeah. No matter how much we hate these drugs, no matter how much we hate these drugs, the answer is not prison, the answer is not prosecutors, the answer is not criminal laws. That there is no legitimate basis between, between, in distinguishing between addicts based upon the substance that they are addicted to. Just as there is no legitimate basis for distinguishing between the responsible user of alcohol or caffeine and the responsible user of marijuana, cocaine, mushrooms, or LSD, so there is no legitimate basis for distinguishing between the person who is seriously addicted to alcohol or cigarettes or what have you, and the person who is seriously addicted to cocaine, heroin, even marijuana. There is no legitimate basis, no basis for saying, well, you, you get to fall off the wagon and stumble and, you know, and, and recover and do it again and again and again and again and again until you get your life together. And so long as you can get behind the wheel of a car and go out and hurt somebody, you are not the concern of the criminal justice system. But you over here, you who is addicted to a drug, maybe it's heroin, far less danger, dangerous to the human organism than is the booze over there,